Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. Um, this is episode number 492. And it's a deep sigh for sure. Um, I'll get into that in a second. Before I get into that, let me, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women, strong, successful women attract, create, and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks for the last year and 10 months, more than that now, called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic is all about what happened today. Um, I'm feeling it. I'm seeing all my posts about it. So this is very timely. So in case you're wondering when this is, this is Saturday, October 5th, 6th, 6th. So I have to do the math in my head. <laughs> um, Saturday, hence why I'm dressed casually, actually sitting in the car because, um, I was doing some other stuff actually at the, at the, um, Culver City Art Festival and lost track of time. So I'm like, I've got to have a five o'clock thing. So I'll do it right now before I drive home. And I'm sitting still, not driving, just to be clear. In case everybody's going, don't drive and, and, and broadcast. <laughs> um, so today's topic is, again, it's episode number 492. I do this every day. And this will, is a Facebook Live at first, but it will go onto my YouTube channel and also onto my um, iTunes podcast at some point too. So today's topic is deep sigh what's next and i'm hoping to be able to teach you something besides just the the venting that's going on right now so for those of you not sure what's going on if you're watching from another country but if you're in this country and i'm tempted not to get political about this there's a lot of upset about the um the vote that happened today that put um judge kavanaugh into a justice position in the supreme court and without getting into too much um politicizing and commentary about that, at least I'll attempt not to, um, I want to speak to a couple of things that I feel about this that's going on right now. There's, for a lot of people, there's a lot of sense of um, grief, to be blunt, because everything they were holding against came true. And so the upset and the discord and the frustration, I totally appreciate and feel it, and I know what's going on. I can feel it viscerally. But also I have such a feeling of compassion for the people I, people I know. And the truth beyond that is, well, okay, I'm jumped to that already. The truth I'm talking about is that life goes on. Yes, we know that. But at the same time, the culture in this country is being, um, I won't say massage is the wrong word, but it's being molded, maybe that's a better word, into something that a lot of people don't want. And it seems that it is, it is a culture there's being upset. Now, there's, there's, I, did, I talked yesterday about the, the phoenix rising or rising from the ashes, about how um, we're stronger at the broken places. It's so evident today. It's so evident today. What I'm seeing more and more, thankfully, with what's happened, is a coming together of people who think the same way. There's a resource now that seems to be growing more and more for women to be supportive and supported by other men, by other women, other men. And Seeing the women I know, like some of the, some of the women watching right now, who stand up for other women, and for myself as a man who, who, amongst other men, stand up for women too, it's bringing us out of the hiding in some ways. We've become more visible, more public, more viscerally energized because of what happened. So, as um, Marianne Williamson was quoted as saying a few days ago, I actually posted a quote on my wall, um, Facebook wall that is, not on a wall in the house, but a Facebook wall. She said something, and I'm paraphrasing at the beginning, she opened the, her statement by saying, They've done it now. Well, as of today, they've really gone and done it. Meaning that they've woken, one, a massive population of people who didn't really participate that much before, which is mostly a lot of women and minorities who know that what they've allowed to happen without their, like on their watch isn't helping them. There's a lot of conjecture and presumption about what's going to happen now he's been voted in. I'm not in agreement with any of that stuff, with what's, what he's purported to be doing because I'm not a fan of his work or his standing regardless of his perceived possible and unproven necessarily heinous acts I've got to be careful I say that because I don't want to start causing slander but at the same time I'm very clear that what's been happening is upsetting a lot of people and, uh, and part of that is is that we need to come together as people more than ever because of what's happening it ain't about them in D.C. In, in Washington, it's not about them being the people leading, making the differences. It's us being leaders ourselves. It's us being collaborators. It's us 
saying no more that we let other people run our lives. Now, that may be anti-government <laughs> in a way, because if it's not a government you believe in, or it's not a leadership you believe in, why would you follow it? I mean, that's a pretty obvious question. I've, I've come across that one in many organizations I was part of, companies I worked for, where I could not sustain my commitment to that organization because of the way the leadership ran it, and I walked away. It's hard to do with a country, I understand. But it's certainly possible to do things in this country to, um, what's the term they use? A uh, conscious, conscious, conscious objector? Is that what the term is? I'm thinking I may have mis misquoted it. But in terms of when it comes to war, people would choose not to fight by being a, con a conscious, I want to say it's conscious objector. I may have got it wrong. But if you, got it, if you remember what it is, please tell me because I may have conflated some words. Well, in this case, in this situation, I think there's another piece of that where being a conscious objector, being a conscious um, disagreer, <laughs> if there's such a word, is such a, a challenge right now because there's so much unrest. And the good news is about this, and there is good news in this, I believe. And again, I talked about this yesterday about that, that, that um, rising from the ashes, is first of all, there's an election coming up. Conscious, conscious, conscientious objector. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Good to see you, Brian. Conscientious, that was the word. It was a conscious something. Conscientious, better than, yeah, conscious and objective. Thank you for that. <laughs> in a way, that's what we have a choice to do now. Because to blindly go along with the way things are being done, especially when there seems to be so many questions about the authenticity, the accuracy, and the validity of various votes and elections and um, people in power, if we can't trust them, why do we follow them? Now, I'm not... I don't intend to start a revolution, although I am promoting, I am promoting a revolution on Tuesday, but that's a love revolution, and that's, that we'll talk about later on. Um, <laughs> revolution, yeah, okay. So I want to sp just to plant some seeds and to get some thoughts out there. One, to speak to the immediate pain that's going on. Yeah, well, the conscious objector does work as well. Yeah, it does, Brian, yes. Um, I, was talking, I was talking a couple of, a couple of the, a couple of days ago about ladies having a list of qualities for a conscious man. So conscious, conscientious, yeah, they, they're interchangeable in their context. So getting back to what I was going to say, I'm very aware, very aware. Um, i to turn the fan on because it's getting hot in here. I'm not sure if you can still hear over the headphones or if you can hear me okay. Um, right now most of me, may be the most important time for people to come together and support each other. I believe there's going to be a, a, a large amount, a large um population going through grief right now because of the feelings they have for having their perceived having their dreams crushed by what happened so Catherine what do you see you think people have to remember again what they agreed agree on first before they should start sorry I'm just trying to see what I said I think people have to remember again what they agree on first before they should start arguing about what they oh gee what a mess interesting okay um my point, or my, my, I want to give a couple of pieces of advice. One is, right now is the most important time to connect with your friends. Right now is the most important time to reach out to people and support each other, to know that you're connected, not just on social media, but in person, real life. Because people are going through their own levels and degrees of upset, hurt feelings, grief, trauma, renewal, because of what happened. There are many women who, after Dr. Ford's testimony last week, it was only last week, wow, yeah, eight days ago, nine days ago, have like it's almost ten, t t tearing the band-aid off an old wound from themselves. So a lot of women I know in particular, and some men, who are so distraught and, and upset by what happened that it's renewed their own wounds. And so right now is an important time to be compassionate with your friends, to be caring for them, to be supportive of them, to reach out and say, can I be there for you? Or in fact, be there for them. That's something I'm doing for my friends too and, and feeling it. One of the these talks is hopefully to wake people up and inspire them as well. Second thing, is it, this is not the time to give up because it's tempting. <laughs> it's so tempting. In fact, if anything, it's a good time to step forward and to say, what can we do to make a difference? And maybe it's going to create counsel, counsel support for people who've gone through traumas who want to heal. Maybe it's something we do where we, we well, get out the vote, frankly, because it's only a month away, just about a month away from the election. And I know from what people have said, like Marion Williamson and other people have said too, that what's coming, it's like... <laughs> I'm going to use this quote because it feels right. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. 
What happens if you scorn about 30 million women? Or hell's going to break loose. And that's a good thing, by the way. I'm really feeling that it's time for a change. It's time for a shift. It's time for a wake-up call. The likes of which we haven't seen before. The old boy network, the political structure has been in place for many, many years, and I'm not saying which side, because they're both the same as far as I'm concerned in this conversation, has been needing a change for many, many years. Sorry, wow. Just knocked my phone over to try it again. Let me try it again. Okay, so what do you say to Catherine? Sorry, just didn't quite know how to give, put my thoughts in English. Ah, got it. Okay, yes. Um, yeah, this is, this is a very precarious setup for my phone. I don't have a tripod with me. I didn't plan on doing this, so it's wedged up against the screen, against the cleanest box. <laughs> that is my technology at work. Um, so it feels like there's something happening. So one thing is, please make sure you do, if it's in your power to go vote, do so. Secondly, um, reach out to your friends. Offer support, offer caring, compassion, c- kind words. Because some, of them, some people are extremely um, raw right now. So that's one of the things going on too. And then let's see what we want to build in the future. I don't have a picture of that, what well, that is yet, but I know that what we've done so far we need to do something different based on what's happened. So the voices may not be loud enough. Maybe the actions aren't loud enough. Maybe the voting needs to be louder. Maybe there's something that needs to change in the culture so that these sort of situations don't happen again. Meaning that people who aren't aligned to their integrity and honesty and, and, and truth, people are not, not lined up there, don't get the positions of power. My particular um, bugaboo or bearing my, being my bonnet type thing is watching what's happening with people who demonstrate a lack of integrity, doing jobs that require integrity. That's one of the things I want to see change. Um, Because I see people, you know, the the thing is what I'm noticing, it's a very interesting, it's like very bad magicians, where basically you say, don't look at this hand and do something over here. The problem is you can see both hands. And what they're doing, frankly, what they're they're presenting, what they're actually um, doing, is they're distracting with one thing once they do something else. So just to drop a little politics on this one, I'm not sure if you're aware, but that last week they passed a tax bill that nobody even saw because they're doing it under the cover of the Kavanaugh hearings. See, my point I'm going to make is you've got to have your eyes open. So going forward in any area of life, and this is not just in, in politics, but in any area of life where things have been screwed up or challenged, it's easy to get myopic and get closed in your views because you've been through upset, suffering, pain like that. And hold like that for a second. That truly, it's time for us to wake up fully. To step up, to own up, to ask for help, to get help, to give help, to stand in a place where we know the truth. Because truth is one of the things that we say, truth will set you free. It's got some work to do. But I believe it's possible. So my, my advice, my recommendation is to first get support from other people, find counsel, get help, support yourself and then line it to where you want to go. I have some offerings that I'll talk about, but actually I'll put them in the comments because I don't want to put them on the video um, because that would be crass. But I do have some things that might offer you some help. Um, again, this is my Facebook Live. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time usually, which is why I was in the car doing it this time because I didn't get home in time. Um, this is also goes onto my, my uh, business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And also now onto my podcast, which is also Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to both of those and download the, the podcast. Um, I say I'll put in the comments a couple of ideas if you want to check some things out of my work that might help you. Um, a little self-love practice and uh, my new Love 18 program coming out. So with that, I thank you for watching as always. I appreciate your comments and thoughts. If you have any thoughts you want to add to my broadcast after I sign off. And... Uh, more than ever. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Bye.